different challenges mm -hmm. that my community faces. Mm -hmm. How can I continue to make the Word of God, the Bible, mm -hmm. relevant? And so during, during the uh, antebellum period, Absalom Jones and David Walker both take up the story of Exodus almost literally, mm -hmm. that if God delivered the children of Israel Good. from Egypt, across yeah. the Red Sea into the promised land. Then God, then God will do the same. <laughs> and the promised land was freedom from slavery. Mm -hmm. Well, freedom from slavery came mm -hmm. and we weren't free. Mm -hmm. uh, we faced Jim Crow and segregation. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to, to the era of reconstruction uh, the, and you look at sermons, the promised land doesn't, doesn't look like freedom from slavery. Emancipation is no longer, mm -hmm. is no, is no longer identified with the promised land. Mm -hmm uplift is. Well, how do, we, how do we educate now? How do we move from just emancipation to education and the kind of cultural attainment that will lift black communities? Mm -hmm. And after, after Reconstruction, that changes again in the Harlem Re Renaissance. This mm -hmm. idea that we need to throw off the manacles of slavery, the old, the old Southern sort of African-American rebirth and a and rebirth. That's, that's right. right. The Renaissance yes. man, mm -hmm. uh, Renaissance man, Renaissance woman. But for the Harlem Renaissance writers, for the most part, mm -hmm. except for Zora Neale Hurston, mm -hmm. they were really thinking rather in, in sexist terms. Mm -hmm. They were thinking the new Negro was mm -hmm. a new Negro man. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, but but Zorno Hurston, I thought, was one of the most interesting figures during that time. Her Moses, Man of the Mountain, um, re helped African Americans rethink the Exodus story in a way that took the focus off a singular figure, like a Moses figure, and put it on the community and asked us to imagine together what it would, what it would mean if we all together walked into the promised land and we weren't waiting for mm -hmm. or dependent upon one singular figure or God to send one person mm -hmm. to deliver a whole group of people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go on to look at the era of civil rights with Adam Clayton Powell and Martin Luther King Jr. who understood the Exodus story in the promised land as being, mm -hmm. as being included as full citizens. Mm -hmm that we would certainly enjoy, as Dr. Martin Luther King would say, the blessings of liberty. And, and if you look at his speeches, he takes the rhetoric from the Constitution and the Declaration mm -hmm. of Independence, the kind of rhetoric that, that founded our nation, mm -hmm. and he connects it to the Exodus story. And freedom means becoming a full citizen. Mm -hmm. um, well, after, at, at a certain point, after, after the, by the end of the Civil Rights mm -hmm. Movement, we find that Adam that um, Albert Clegg mm -hmm. wants to do something very different with that, mm -hmm. that there's the frustration uh, that has risen because African-Americans still aren't enjoying the blessings of liberty. Mm -hmm. There is a move to take that story and to claim it for ourselves and to claim the power to change mm -hmm. our lives. Uh, not that power, uh, but, but not placing it in the founding documents, but placing it in black communities mm -hmm. themselves. And so we get the black power movement. So I wanted to look at the various ways that we have interpreted one singular book, the mm -hmm. book of Exodus, mm -hmm. over the course of a long period of time. But my, my, my concern was to show that each interpreter started first with the concerns of their community at that time. And I, and I wanted to encourage uh, my students who were, who were going to serve churches and serve in religious communities to do the same. You know, <clears throat> during this, uh second segment, I mean, the final segment, mm -hmm. what I would like for you to do is to, uh, and I think you've mentioned uh, Adam Clayton Powell and mm -hmm. Dr. Martin Luther King. I, yeah. I think that these are two giants, yeah. but I think that people know more about uh, Dr. King mm -hmm. than they do about Adam Clayton Powell. Mm -hmm. And so during this second, uh, this final segment, when we come back, we've got about uh, 45 or 50 uh, seconds here. But when we come back during this uh, final segment, what I'd like for you to do, and I say this now because I don't want to forget uh, right. to, to push it forward. I want you to talk about Dr. Martin Luther King and Adam Clayton Powell and with emphasis up on Adam Clayton Powell and why he sh is significant. And